Are you stuck in the middle? Today, I want to speak about exactly that. You may remember me from previous episodes talking about uh, wanting to be a millionaire, but then I didn't tell you why I want to become a millionaire as such. I may, maybe I did a little. Maybe I did say, well, I've seen other people do it and it looks easy. Therefore, I want to be able to achieve it. So then I can tell other people that it's quote unquote easy um, and, and kind of like, surely if they can do it, I can do it too. So to kind of like prove my, prove my abilities or my, my, my uh, own ambition and my drive to be able to do something like that. However, I've kind of like left out a bigger part um, to it that I've kind of remembered, um, which is essentially the whole reason why I do business is to do good and use profits from the business to give back. So for the last, I don't know, maybe six years now, I've been doing a Ryland Consulting Prize at my old university, Nottingham Trent. Uh, university. And that's to give um, a small cash prize to first year students that have completed the year and they've been the most improved or the best progressed. Uh, it's changed over the years. Um, and that little bit of money helps them to either buy equipment or to buy a new laptop or to do whatever they want with it, really, um, which has been great. And you get back the stories from the students um, and they're really encouraging because uh, one, it's uh, getting awarded something or is like somebody believing in you and um, believing in your effort and achievements and, and seeing your efforts and achievements. Um, and then having the, the cash injection is, is great because as a student, I used to struggle um, quite a lot financially and did odd jobs to, to get by. Uh, one of which was a steward. So I was a steward in the football ground and uh, the Nottingham forest football ground. I also was like a car park attendant at Christmas time because at Christmas time, they want you to leave the part of car park really quickly. Uh, really quickly. So uh, they would open the barriers and just get us to stand there collecting their tickets. So then that's like a deterrent to, oh, it looks like they're not, you know, using tickets. So you would go and just drive through. But I only, I think it only happened once or twice that somebody wouldn't hand you their ticket on the way out because uh, they wanted the tro the flow of traffic to be good. Um, so yeah, I've done all sorts of odd jobs to to make money to, um, to kind of still eat and survive at university. So yeah, having that little bit of cash injection, I think is important. And what I want to do with the students that I've awarded this prize to is like still invest in them ongoingly. Um, so I've lost touch with um, quite a few of them uh, and I'd like to get back in touch. So if you happen to be watching this and you were one of the people that I awarded the prize to, then please get in touch because that'd be cool. And um, if not, then you'll be hearing from me soon because I want to build that into a little bit of a network to hopefully create one, either more of a financial kind of like buffer to give more prizes or whether or not individuals would want to do something like that themselves. Uh, so having it as like a self-fulfilling kind of circle, um, circle of life where those students that have been awarded now come back and uh, either give the same or, or more or less, it doesn't really matter, uh, back into the pot so we can just carry on this stuff um, beyond my um, existence, as it were. So to, for the system to, to keep going beyond my years, which is a nice way of putting it. So that's one thing I've been doing. I then try to kind of like bring it back down to my secondary school, uh, started having the conversations where we would give a prize to pay for like extra tuition for certain kids that were needing the help at like GCSE level. Um, uh, unfortunately, the headmaster moved away, so I didn't get to finish the conversation. It essentially means that I have to restart the conversation, which has been too much friction to actually bother doing, which is uh, frustrating, but it is what it is. Um, but the whole idea really is I've, I've kind of had this idea of wanting to build a school. Um, I've never necessarily seen what that looks like in full detail, but I know it's like, I want to build a school of some sorts. I was really inspired by Daughters of Destiny, which is a Netflix documentary or an Amazon doc documentary about this tech entrepreneur sold his tech venture or whatever, then uses profits to run this private school out in India where he takes one um, child from each family um, that is in the area from I think year like yeah I think they're four four years old takes them all the way up until they go to college pays for their college uh, tuition and stuff and hopes that those kids then come back to those families to to reinvest everything that's been invested into them into the local communities and so forth which is super inspiring and it's that kind of like paying it forward so that was a really uh, big kind of like message of that uh, documentary um uh, and the impact of that is insane so I've also been like flip out now over to like America started to see alpha school where they're doing this like two hour, uh, education kind of like stint across your subjects that you need to study for. And then the rest of your day 
is dealt with like workshops and stuff where you're doing things that are more aligned to your hobbies or your interests. And then when you get into high school, you're able to do um, a way more focused kind of, I, I don't know the labeling of it, but a focused piece of work, which is like you take a particular subject and you kind of achieve um, different things to, to, to get to that goal. So I think one, um, one, one of the, one of the um, girls or one of the students in the, um, in the high school was trying to flatten uh, the kind of the cancer curve, as it were, people getting cancer um, through kind of bringing, highlighting uh, stuff around dietary uh, issues and things. Somebody else was building like a BMX or biking like track. So again, to be able to do that, you have to think about um, hiring, leasing, hiring people, you know, all this extra stuff and be able to, to do that. And they were doing that at high school um, alongside their studies because they're using AI driven apps um, to learn stuff. And I've always been interested in that. They've now started to advertise like a two hour learning kind of like trademark kind of approach for homeschoolers. Um, we don't have kids yet, but I would love to see where that goes and whether or not that American um, kind of education system and how could that be adapted to the UK education system. And then tie on top more recently, um, something that really was inspiring was build uh, build space they had a specific workshop, um, like nights and weekends is what they were calling it, which is, uh, and they did seasons. So in the latest season, which is season five, um, over your nights and weekends, you would build an idea. Uh, you'd take it, um, over six weeks, they would take you from the idea, getting it out in the public. You'd then build like a little toy or like a prototype. You then test that stuff. You'd then improve it. You get feedback. And then at the end of the six weeks, you give like a demo of like where you've got to, um, and the progression that you've done. I think last season they did kind of like a, 1v1, and I think I remember mentioning this in a previous Don't Be a Doorstop podcast, when we 1v1 whittle down the ideas to like the winning idea um, and you get to vote on it um, through YouTube and stuff. That was really, really good. I wonder if they do the same. However, recently sent an email that they're closing down, which is such a shame because it was such an inspiration. Um, all these ideas, all these people globally getting involved, um, all remotely uh, and helping people to take their ideas and formulate them into something like workable and tangible and testable um, to kind of like encourage people not to get like stuck in the analysis paralysis or, or, or kind of like um, whatever mental or physical or financial hurdle you end up having, you know, always trying to whittle it down to the simplest iteration just to further something along um, and to get you out there public publicly sharing about it as well. So I thought that was great. It's such a shame that they're closing it down because the, um, the founder um, has kind of lost a little bit of the passion for kind of like what's next or the next iteration of it. Um, and because of that is going to park it and see what else is out there, um, which is understandable. I think you've got to keep going with things that you're passionate about and not force things all the time, but it's, it's just a shame. Um, but I'm really inspired by all those three different approaches. So the reason why I want to be a millionaire is essentially to build a school and you need millions to build a school. And I don't know exactly how it's going to come together, but that's like my goal. That's my purpose, I, I would say. Um, whittling down that a little bit further, I feel generally speaking, we've been created uh, in collaboration to collaborate with God to make the world um, flourish. And I believe that in building a school that is making the world flourish, especially when you're able to get to kids when they're young to instill the right frameworks um, and approaches. Because as we know, as we get older, things are a little bit harder to change and adapt um, and pivot on. Um, so yeah, it'd be really cool to build some sort of school that whether or not it's digital or remote or, or a particular place or whether or not it's a workshop, I don't know what it's gonna look like, the, the details, but I know that I've got like starting points um, so I've obviously got the Nottingham Trent stuff where I can start to funnel some of the the minds and some of the um, interactions with the like the network of the slightly more kind of like university level aged uh, kind of group of people. Match that then with workshops and how that helps people. And I just, I guess I was chatting with Kemmer the other day about, I'm really inspired about when I do talks at Trent because they invite me to do a talk alongside this stuff. I'm always excited about the fact that it's like an origin story or, or I'm excited about origin stories, generally speaking, because they're fascinating, but really it's kind of like that encounter, um, that creates like an interesting origin story. So those moments in the, in one's origin story is really fascinating. Um, so there was a guy at, um, that came to speak at our, 
um, on a, a, our course one day. And I was really inspired by what he did and how he did it. Cause he was this like, uh, digital enthusiast. He was doing a bit of like, um, like he was super early on to like vlogging super early into live streaming, um, at that time and like content creation. Now he's into like the crypto uh, side of stuff. I think his name's Phil Campbell. Um, and he was really inspiring just the, the way that he was like scratching his own itch and the, um, the inspiration of like him coming to speak, um, to a bunch of students, which I thought was cool. So I've always wanted like those moments kind of like inspire you to either change trajectory or to like slingshot you to somewhere different. Um, and I always hope that, and I kind of like go with that as a goal to be, to some extent it's like, this is like 30 odd students. This is like 30 odd encounters or like, this is the start of 30 origin stories or like the contribution to an existing origin story. Um, and I hope that I could be an inspiration to them in the same way that that guy back there was an inspiration to me. Um, so they can then be an inspiration to the next generation and so forth. So it's like paying forward through kind of encounters, being a part of somebody's origin story for them to fulfill their purpose, which is working in collaboration, um, to make the world flourish, to make the world a better place. So yeah, that's, I've never really expressed it as like, um, clearly as that, even though that's still a bit of a riff, but yeah, the reason why I want to be a millionaire is to work in collaboration with God to make the world flourish. And I see that through building a school essentially. Um, and I think along the side of that is like, um, sometimes you can get stuck in the gap or stuck in the middle. Um, I run a don't be a doorstop podcast. That is a doorstop. Um, if you use a hammer for a doorstop, it works. It's sufficient. It does a great job. However, a hammer should be used to hammering nails. And Tom and I talk a lot about purpose, entrepreneurship, um, mindset, uh, business ideas alongside of that. Um, and I found that more and more I've realized that yes, you might be like obviously a hammer doing a doorstop type of job. Uh, but as you start to reframe things. It might be that you're two objects that are very, very close. So it's the whole distraction, uh, the whole rubies approach, um, which is like Aladdin in the cave, the monkey gets distracted by the ruby when really they went in for the, the, um, the genie in the lamp. So when you get closer, could it be that like, you know, for like getting water out your pasta or wherever you use like a colander or whatever, but then for flour, getting out the lumps of your flour, you use something else. I can't remember the name of it, but like a sieve, right? Those are very, very similar tools. Um, but one is better at one thing than the other. So it's like, I'm starting to notice more. So the nuance of when it's very, very close and you think you're doing the right thing. So for example, me doing the, um, going back to like high school level. Cause I thought if it works at a university level, I could go back and do high school. Cause that's more impactful. Um, you can kind of like really change the directory. One degree at high school would be far better than one degree at university. If you walk those two pathways out. Um, but maybe that's essentially a very, very close. Don't be a doorstop kind of like distraction. Maybe that's the client or maybe that's the serve version. And really I should be doing like a workshop approach. There's something like more like a school type of thing. Um, so I'm just starting to really reflect on the nuances between what is a good pathway or like what is taking me a little bit askew. Um, and the kind of like the nuance and the muddiness of the definition of things that are contributing or like distracting. Um, and it all comes down to really the clarity of the vision. So firstly, like the way to not get stuck in the middle is be utterly clear about what you're trying to achieve or what you're doing. So I think I've not been very clear with myself in or reminding myself, Hey, I have uttered this before that I want to build a school and that's why I do business. So it can be, uh, to build a school. Um, so being utterly clear on that, and then you can be more clear on whether or not something is a Ruby or it is actually the genie lamp and be a little bit more, um, in tune with whether or not fear is pushing you down to like make you think that this is the genie lamp when actually it's the Ruby or you're trying to like scale it down because this thing over here is a bit scarier to do. Um, so there's so much nuance in the, in the journey and trekking it out and trying not to get overly analytical about the journey in itself. So yeah, I would, I would say if you're stuck in the middle, go back to the purpose, like why are you doing this? And if you don't know why you're doing this, whatever this is, um, or maybe you're not doing anything like why are you, creating something, um, just kind of coming back to the whole, like, ultimately we should do stuff to make the world flourish. We should probably do that in collaboration with others and a higher power, which to me is God. Um, 
And I think it's like being really, really clear on that. And if you don't know, like ask, ask what, what is like, ask others, ask, ask God, um, to get absolute clarity on that. And then it's a case of then when it comes to the rubies, just like being really clear, what is a ruby and what isn't, um, notice that there's so much nuance that, that can kind of pull you away or get you distracted in that middle, which means you stay in the middle and you don't really achieve what you feel you're driven to, or feel that you, you've, um, got to achieve, um, as the, as the main goal. I feel like there should be a th third point, but I've not come up with a third point yet. Um, but it is like clear vision and don't get distracted by the rubies. Now they could be positive things and even they could be like energy drainers. So for example, if you're like supporting, um, others right now, sometimes that, that is a very good thing to do, but could that also be a kind of like distraction to the main goal of achieving what you want to do. And I think I'm starting to get into a real interesting place of reflecting on what constitutes a distraction or not, especially when it feels right to do X or it feels right to do Y um, and the nuances of that. Um, so yeah, it can be a, a lonely journey in that process of figuring it out, but just speak to people, ask people's opinions and advice. You don't need to do any of it. It's just a case of um, sometimes it helps put stuff into the dome so you can background process uh, on stuff as well. But yeah, it's a, a real good um, brain dump of things that I've been thinking about and things I wanted to like express or more so document um, to kind of share a little bit and document my thinking of this because I always enjoy coming back to see what I was thinking or what I was doing like years later. Um, so I'm going to really enjoy watching this video back and maybe this is it. Like sometimes the drive should be you create videos now to enjoy them 10 years later. Um, cause I'm sure you'll really enjoy watching them back five years or two years or even six months sometimes for people that have um, very drastically changing lives. Um, but yeah, that's it. So thanks so much for giving me some of your time. I'll chat to you later. Bye for now. <music> Thank you.